All right. Now we're doing free code camp, JavaScript algorithms and data structures, basic algorithm, pardon me, basic algorithm scripting, find the longest word in a string. All right. So now we're going to return the length of the longest word in the provided sentence. Our response should be a number. All right. Sounds simple enough, doesn't it? <laughs> anyway, uh, so let's get to it. So first we're going to have to, th let's think about this and think about what we're going to have to do before we do anything, right? So basically, clearly we're going to have to iterate through the, uh, the string to find the count of these numbers and find out which one of these, pardon me, of these words and find out which one of these words is the, is the longest. This one clearly is going to be the longest. It's got six in it, but, uh, and then we're going to have to return the number it is. So if this one was six and then the last one was six, regardless, it would be six, right? So that being said, let's start with the for loop since we know we're going to have to iterate through. So let's say four, let i equal zero, while i is less than string.length, we're going to say i plus plus, all right? So now that we've got this, what are we going to need? We're going to need to do something like this. We're going to have to count up each word. And then we're going to also have to count the, the words. We're going to have to compare the words with whatever maximum amount of uh, letters we already have. So like we've got three here. And we're going to have to compare three to five. And so five is going to win. So we're going to have to make the max five. And then when it gets to six, we're going to have to make the max six. All right. So let's declare some variables. We're going to say let count equal zero to start off with for the count. And then we're also going to have the max and we're going to say let max equal zero as well. OK. So now that we've got that going on, uh, how are we going to split this up? Right. So we're going to have to count these up and then stop at each space. Right. So we're going to need an if statement to say if we get to a space, we're going to do something. So let's start off with that. Let's say if uh, we get to a space. So if str at i equals a space, so an empty string with a space in it, so space string like that, we're going to have to do something, OK? So what we're going to have to do is compare if this, the uh, count is higher than the max. We haven't even started the count yet, but we know we're going to have to compare if the count is more than the max, and then we're going to have to replace the count with the max if the max is lower, right? So we're going to say another if string statement inside of this. We'll say if uh, count is greater than max, what we're going to do here is say uh, max now equals count, OK? But like I said, what's the count? We haven't even started counting, right? So the thing is, if it's not a string, what we're going to do is an else. If it's not, pardon me, if it's not a space, else we're going to add to a count. Okay, so let's come down here and just click this uh, curly brace and it'll tell you us which curly brace to go to. So we're going to say else right here. And we'll say count plus plus. Whoops. Count plus plus. Okay. So now we're adding to the count. Okay. So the thing is, once it hits this thing, the count, we can't just keep counting up forever. We've got to reset it back to zero every time we hit a space. So not only are we going to say if count is greater than max, we're going to do this, but we're also going to say, regardless, if we hit a, str a space, we're going to have to say count, whoops, count now equals zero. Okay. But you know what? Look at this. What about this one? There's no space after this one. OK, so what happens when we get to the last one? So we're going to have to deal with that as well. So we're going to have to say something like this. Uh, what are we going to have to do? Well, first off, uh, oh, no, 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 no. If we can say if, if we can say or right here, if I equals string dot length minus one will do this stuff as well. We'll reset the count to zero and check to see if max is over count. And that'll take care of this case as well. Right. 
So now that all looks pretty good, uh, I guess we can return the max right now and see if the thing works. So return max. I really hope this works because I this is like the fifth time I've tried to record this. Uh, so what we're going to do is say console.log right here. And look, it says six. So hopefully that that's good. Let's run it. No, super long words. That's not going to work. So let's do something like this. If it's at string dot length minus one, and let's let's change this to let's just say uh, I is less than or equals string dot length. Now let's run it. OK, so that works, right? Great. Awesome. Yeah. But you know what? <laughs> uh, that's a little much, don't you think? Uh, but the thing is, the shorter way, we haven't even learned how to do any of this stuff to do it the shorter way. But I'm going to show you the shorter way anyway, because why not? You're going to have to might as well get you exposed to it. So. The thing is, we can use uh, we can use what can we use? We can use like these methods to do it in a one liner in one liner fashion as well. So let's do something like this. Let's say const and we'll say find longest word length. We'll copy that, throw it in right here. And now it's going to equal S for string. And we're going to have an arrow right here. I'll bring it down here so we've got a little more room to work with uh, just, you know, for for uh, the video's sake. So first things first, like like before, uh, we're going to need to break this thing down and count each of the letters inside of this thing. So we've got a, a super easy way to break this thing down and check it. Uh, called the map method. But the thing is, this map method here, and I'll show you, it's it's basically just like a for loop, uh, except for it's it looks like this instead of having to do a for loop. But the thing is, this map method needs this thing in an array. And we'll get into the map method in a second. But see, we need the, 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 sh the sentence in an array where each word is in its own uh, elements, all right? So to do that, we're going to use this handy split method. We haven't learned about it yet, but I'll tell you about it now. So the split method uh, of string values takes a pattern and divides this string into an ordered list of substrings by searching for the pattern, uh, putting these substrings into an array and returning the array. Right. So the one. So what we're going to do, look, it's the exact same sentence we got right here. Uh, what we're going to do is split it by this by a space right here. If we wanted to do every single uh, character, we would split it by an empty string, which would split it by the spaces between the characters. And then this way, if we didn't put anything in it, it would just split it by the actual string itself. It would just put the whole string in an array. That being said, we're going to use the space. All right. So what we're going to do here is say s dot split and we're going to split it by these spaces. And as you can see right here, every single one of these is now in its every single word is now in its own uh, element. And if we didn't have the space, it would just have every single letter in its cell, every single character in the element. And if we didn't have it at all, it would just put the whole thing in there, just like the site said. Right. So now that we've got that taken care of, what we want to do is do a uh, con we want to do a, a a dot length on each one of these. Right. So to do that, do that, instead of doing a for loop, we're going to use this map method. And the map method of array instances creates a new array populated with the result of calling a provided function on every element in the call in the calling array. So it's basically like a for loop. So like here, we've got array one dot map and then we've got X, which represents each element. And then the little uh, arrow function right here. And then we're going to say X times two. It'd be like saying string at I times two for each one. Right. So it's going to make one into two. It's going to make eight. It's going to make uh, four into eight, nine into 18, 16 into 32. All right. So we're going to do come over here and we're going to say dot map and we'll say E for the element because I don't like putting X there. Uh, we'll put E for the element and we'll say E dot length. All right. And as you can see here, we've got each one of these words before we did this. It was this. And now each one of the words, see, there's three, five, five, three. We've got three, five, five, three, just like that. So now we've got the length of each one of them. So now all we got to do is tr is find a way to find this, to make this thing say that six is the biggest number. 
And we're going to do the math on max. I don't know if we learned about math on max, but I think we might have in ES6, but it doesn't matter. We're going to talk about it again. So the math.max static method returns the largest number of given, pardon me, the largest of the numbers given as input parameters, right? So what we're gonna do is math.max and then we'll just have all the values in there like this. So let's wrap this thing up in parentheses like this. And we're gonna say math.max. But we've got a NAN, what's up with that? Well, basically, as you see here, this is an array and math.max is looking for comma separated values. But in the ESC, in the pardon me, ES6 section, we did in fact learn how to make comma separated values, right? By using good old spread syntax, which allows an iterable such as an array or string to be expanded, expanded pardon me, in places where zero or more arguments or elements are expected. And since there's zero more elements there, we're gonna use this, pardon me, arguments I should say. We're gonna do the arguments thing, all right? Well, it doesn't matter. We're still using uh, spread syntax. So we'll say dot, dot, dot like that. And look at that, we got our six right there. All right, so we've got these two way, different ways. And as you can see, uh, very difficult. Very, very, very difficult, all right? Let's run the test, looks good and submit it. Uh, this is my fifth time trying to record this, it's that hard. Uh, that being said, if you guys are having trouble with these, and because trust me, look, look, guys, these these uh, algorithms and all that stuff, these things were not created by these guys. Algorithms were created by military contractors back in the 50s and the 60s and the 40s that were getting paid. These huge teams of these guys that were getting paid millions of dollars at the time to cook this stuff up. Uh, so feel feel it, it would be foolish to feel like you're you're not learning anything or that this is too hard because this stuff was invented by people that were living very nice lives getting paid hundreds of thousands of dollars at the time okay so if you're having trouble with this just jump over here to code wars get yourself a uh, get yourself an account start with the eight Qs, go all the way down to about five Q, whatever. And uh, if you're having trouble with these, I've got all the videos you need. Well, I got pretty much all of them. And if you, if you need a video or my video is not good enough, just let me know in the comments and I'll redo it for you. Anyway, so now we're on to return largest numbers in arrays. And we'll see you next time.